hand versus chainsaw. It looks painful. Our hospitals are taking care of more patients than ever. You're right. <laughs> With medical teams under constant pressure. Can Dr. Pixie come to resource, please? Somebody as poorly as this little one, we really need to treat them quickly. To meet our expectations. I'm just worried about what it's going to be like afterwards. But there's a crucial member of the team we sometimes forget. I've never ever been on a bed like this. The hospital bed. Another ward, another storage, another bed. <laughs> In our lifetime, we are likely to need one of them at least three times. I've probably spent a quarter of my life on a hospital bed. <laughs> In this series, our cameras have been given unprecedented access to beds in four very different hospitals across the country. It's life, life and death, and everything that goes in between. We'll see the world through the bed's eyes. Hello, my love. Hiya. As they share the most challenging... I don't know what to do. I don't know. ..most intimate... Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. ..and most rewarding... Happy birthday! In the hospital, you are moments of our lives. Thank you for being here. I haven't been anywhere else. And a hospital cannot function without beds. Beds are vital. This is The Secret Life of the Hospital Bed. The City of Newcastle has one of the UK's top paediatric units, the Great North Children's Hospital. It has a dedicated A&E department for children up to the age of 16. The most critically ill children are brought straight to the rhesus area. Today, rhesus bed two is ready to receive one of its tiniest patients who's struggling to breathe. How are we doing? A baby and only about a month old who they've been out to see and they're concerned about probably a chest infection, but little tiny babies, you've got to be very, very careful. Baby Calvin has been rushed in by ambulance with his mum, Laura. His airways are blocked. He's fighting for his life. <laughs> just so going to have a little lift. Yeah, of um, and how's it, has his breathing like been like this all along? Um, it, him sucking in at the neck it, and under the it chest? Was, it was sort of like that, I'd say, at the weekend, and then yesterday it didn't seem as bad. I'm talking to the GP yesterday, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Just pops. breathing seemed more normal, because it was quite, it had been quite wheezy. Yeah. Um, the team working to save Calvin is led by paediatric specialist Dr Astle and Nurse Emerson. He feels hot, but he just he looks a little bit um, shut down. Ten. Yeah, yeah, but he's warm. He looks more yeah. normal than he, Six. Than he did. Yeah, Calvin has been ill for several okay. days. Uh, An intense uh, coughing fit and difficulty breathing led his mum, Laura, to call 999. They stayed quite blue around the mouth for, mm -hmm. for quite a while. And um, was he breathing during that time? I, I think so. Yeah, OK. Um, he was just... He was breathing, he was making just a really strange noise. During that time. As soon as the, the weather changes, there's lots of little ones coming with bronchiolitis. What can happen is they can be unwell, but then they get very unwell by about day four, and that's what's happened. It's, it's now day four, and he's actually a lot worse. Just remind me when his symptoms first started. Um, I think he's had sort of just a slight cold for sort of the past week, and then mm -hmm. Saturday was when I noticed with his, his breathing and the cough became, you know, like a noticeable not. Um, Bronchiolitis is a chest infection that accounts for almost 20% of admissions of children under one. Calvin is eight weeks old. The team must open Calvin's blocked airway. It's restricting his breathing. So what we need to do is we need to support him. So we're going to support his breathing as he needs it with oxygen. We'll suck out his nose to help with his breathing from that side of things and we'll send a sample of snot. But 
He's a bit mottled to me, and yeah. I just wonder if he's a bit behind with his feet and his fluids. Yeah. And I think maybe it might be sensible to pop a drip in and maybe just give him some just a fluid, bit, yeah. just to try and catch him. If Calvin's fluid. condition doesn't improve once the fluids are on board, he'll be transferred to intensive care. The next 30 minutes on Rhesus bed two are critical. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. Its day surgery ward has 81 beds, used for more than 4,000 procedures a year. Built for purpose, these beds have side rails, a steering pedal and a mount for oxygen. Day surgery bed 32 is prepped and ready for its next shift. Could you take this lady to 32 please? Yes, this way. Okay. Cleaning business owner, Anna Marie, has extreme pain in her knee. She needs surgery to repair the cartilage. This will be her second operation in less than seven months. I was only pushing a supermarket trolley when I heard it crack and it was about four months after my last surgery. It just went pop, it went again. I literally couldn't walk on it. My daughter had to drive me home. And after that, it just keep, it kept just giving way. I'd nearly fall over with it. So. Are you going to wait here when I go down or even now? 48-year-old Anna Marie is carer to her husband, Andrew. He's in constant pain from injuries to his back and hand. He's unable to walk properly or work. The problem I've got is I'm slightly restricted in what, well, very restricted in what I can do uh, physically. And Anne Marie has always been the one to, the thing is, I'm, I'm the carer now, yeah. so for me to be off my feet, literally, for the next Difficult. couple of months, it's going to be really yeah. hard. Yeah. We've been together since we were kids, so growing up together. We, uh, as we said, we've been married, 30, well, been together 34 years, but we renewed our wedding vows. Nurse MacDonald carries out Anna Marie's pre-op checks. Are you right with needles? Me? Yeah. It's me that's not on my hands. I just don't want any fainters on my hands. We just, we just really look out for each other. We're, we're always together. Uh, and as I say, since, since my surgeries, things have become even closer, to be honest. Great. It's a good sign. She does so much for me. Perfect, 4.6. Just sweet enough. After her last operation, Anna Marie started back at work too soon and her knee didn't heal properly. Now she can barely walk. Anna Marie finds it difficult to actually sit down and relax. Uh, and I think that's the problem with what happened last time. She, she actually started uh, doing things too soon, didn't you? So it's... I don't sit down. No. So I find it really hard just sitting here now thinking of things I could be doing. One of the couple's three children, Rachel, is a nurse at the hospital. She's come in on her day off to see her mum. You nervous? Very. I know what's coming this time. <laughs> is it, do, you, do you work on this one? Yeah, so I work. Is it? Yeah. It's busy though, isn't it? Yeah, very busy. Yeah, no problem. So when, when you were saying that you work hard? Do you believe me now? <laughs> <laughs> Lies. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Anna Marie's surgeon is Sir Keith Porter, the UK's only professor of clinical traumatology. We know from your MRI scan you've got a new tear in your cartilage there. We know also you've got uh, some background wear in your knee. Sir Keith operated on Anna Marie's knee seven months ago. So the intended benefits here are to assess your knee, uh, to improve your pain and to improve your function. Because you've got some background arthritis, we can't guarantee that, that you're going to be symptom free, but we know that anyway. I forgot to tell you, my knee has been just going for long today, mm -hmm. unexpected, yeah. and I think quite a lot. So. I think that's related to this new tear, yeah. that suddenly that bit of the cartilage displaces and yeah. causes you some grief. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else you'd like to ask? 
No, you can't yeah. everything, thank okay. you. Okay, see you upstairs. Thank you. He knew I was a bit anxious, so he's, he's, he's made sure that he's there himself for me as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Can I walk down to the theatre? Yes, you can. Day surgery bed 32 is now ready to take Anna Marie for her two hour knee operation. In one year, NHS A&E departments see over 22 million cases. Emergency department RVI. 10 minutes, lovely. Thanks a lot. Bye. The Royal Victoria Infirmary in Newcastle has 29 beds on which to treat the patients that walk through the door. Each bed here works to capacity, handling up to nine patients every 24 hours. A&E bed nine is ready to meet 36-year-old Chris. He's been in a serious road accident on his bike. He was hit by a car. I was hit on this side, but I've gone down on this side. And that's where all of the kind of impacts been. It's mainly up here, this, this area here. It's very, uh, very sore now. No, not just no. Chris's dad, James, was on his way to meet him when the accident happened. When I first literally got to Chris after he'd been knocked over, which is about five minutes or so, he had a very yellow, grey look on him, which I was a bit worried about because clearly I thought, had he had a head injury or was he going to? But I think it was just a shock, the initial shock. Every year, over 20,000 people in the UK are injured in cycle accidents. You see people who are flying around on the bikes and they don't stop at lights and no wonder people get hit, but I was, you know, abiding by the, the, you know, the rules kind of thing, and it's just, it's, it's ended up being a, an accident. If it had been someone coming across, different story. Or a bus. Or a bus, yeah. More than 100 cyclists are killed each year. Chris is lucky not to be one of them. a &E Bed 9 takes Chris for multiple x-rays. These will reveal any breaks or fractures in his arm, ribs or leg. Fantastic, so spin you around a touch. I'm going to take several extras. Okay. Just doing the shoulder. Uh, we're going to take the shoulder, the ankle and also the elbow as well. It's all on the left hand side, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Senior radiographer Mr Patterson is also a cyclist. And you fell off your bike, is that correct? I was knocked off my bike, yeah. Me. What kind of bike was it? Road bike, mountain bike? Yeah, road. It's scary out there. I mean, you kind of have to have eyes absolutely everywhere. You do. I no, uh, was just talking about that. A cycle like commuter, you get that sort of sixth sense that you know something's going to happen, but you never quite get out of the way, do you? I know. The last time Chris was in hospital was for the birth of his first child six months ago. Fantastic. That's the first one done. Just rocks. So, we're going to take some pictures of the ankle next. Yeah. Is it more painful towards the very bottom of the ankle or sort of up towards the shin? The shin. More towards the shin. Yeah. I'm going to lower the back of the bed down slightly mm -hmm. and then I'll get you to actually shuffle your bottom backwards if you can. Okay. So, gently does it. And then, have you ever injured this ankle before? Any previous breaks, dislocations? No, just sprains. Excellent. Let's hope we can see the same thing. Chris has six x-rays in all. He'll return to the ward and wait on A&E bed nine for the results. In the neighbouring children's hospital, Rhesus bed two has been with critically ill Calvin for 30 minutes. He's eight weeks old and was rushed to paediatric A&E with his mum, Laura. With a severe chest infection, he's fighting for breath. It's just horrible when they're poorly, isn't it? It makes you feel so helpless, but you've done absolutely the right thing. So. Calvin's throat is blocked. 
The priority for paediatric specialist Dr Astle is to get fluid into Calvin intravenously. You know what, I'm going to just warm this hand up a bit with some yeah. warm water. A surgical glove filled with warm water makes a tiny hot water bottle for Calvin's hand to bring his veins yeah. to the surface. Oh, and got a cough. It's, it's such a bronchiolitic cough. That's helping anything. So... Will you be able to run the gas through for us? I should be able to. It so should let me. If you would do that, then the hey, gas you can pass and the, the other Right, OK. OK, Mum, you might jump a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I know, I'm sorry. Next, the team check his blood sugar level to make sure it hasn't dropped dangerously low. 5.5, happy. It's looking a bit better, so don't worry. Baby Calvin's dad, Carl, has rushed to the hospital to be by his side. Calvin's airways still need to be cleared to help him breathe. Calvin is out of danger, but he's not well enough to return home. Resus Bed 2 transfers him to a paediatric ward where he will stay under close observation. Resus Bed 2 is put back into circulation, ready for its next critical patient. It's 3 p.m. at Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Day surgery bed 32 is carrying Anna Marie from the ward to the operating theatre. She's having knee surgery for the second time this year. It's crucial the operation works. Anna Marie is the family's breadwinner and carer to husband Andrew, who has chronic pain in his back. We met when we were really young, so we 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 just we just really look out for each other. She's my carer to a large degree. She does virtually everything for me because of my my condition. Strong painkiller now, right? This will make you feel a bit lightheaded. What's your favourite tipple? Cocktail. Cocktail. What sort? Mahita. No, Mahita. no, I like mojito and I don't like strawberry daiquiris as well. Daiquiris as well. So this is your strawberry daiquiris. That's my strawberry daiquiris. They usually knock me out as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bit of oxygen now, right? Just for you. Just for sure. That's the main sleepy stuff going in now. Let's go with the flow. Husband Andrew waits on the ward. I'm, I'm really worried. She struggled with the anaesthetic last time, so hopefully this time. Uh, she's not going to feel quite so sick. Uh, that's that's the big thing, really, the anaesthetic effects. Uh. Eminent trauma specialist Sir Keith Porter will repair the torn cartilage in Anna Marie's knee. This afternoon's procedure is a planned operation. It's called an arthroscopy, which is placing a telescope inside the patient's knee which we use for both diagnostic and treatment purposes. We know the patient has a tear in their cartilage as well as some background wear changes. Whilst it will give more information on assessment, the main reason for the operation today is actually treatment. Without this operation, Anna Marie's leg will continue to give way damaging her cartilage further. Just anxious, see how she is, because hopefully everything's gone okay. 
nearly two hours now. Hopefully back soon. She's in recovery at the moment, so just waiting. After two hours, Anna Marie is reunited with day surgery bed 32 and husband Andrew. This time she's actually going to have to listen to people. She's going to have to listen to me. Anna. Yeah. We've got three children, so they'll, they'll be around to help one, our youngest daughter, Jade. She, she still lives at home, so I've no doubt she'll be looking after, looking after her mum. Come, David. Sure. Yeah. It will take Anna Marie three months to fully recover from the surgery on her knee. Nurse McDonald is in charge of her post-op care. She has to eat something. Drinks um, a hot drink and not feel sick, so we can't send patients home when they're feeling sick. I'm eating. We're going down well. <laughs> <laughs> I ate hard. She asked me to eat hard. She's going to eat a little bit more of this one. A little bit more. It's my birthday. Ow, I ate half a sandwich. Okay. And I've managed to. Nearly, nearly half a sandwich. Nearly half a sandwich. No, look. Anna Marie needs to be able to bear weight on her leg. Otherwise, she can't be discharged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. feel alright? Yeah. Keep past during, your bobs are stable. You feel okay, you have not to eat. That's the criteria for discharge. Thank you. So I'll let you get dressed. After a 10-hour shift, day surgery bed 32's time with Anna Marie is over. Yeah. In Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary, A&E bed 9 is carrying Chris. He has severe pain down his left side after being knocked off his bike. Hello, she'll be sitting next to I've got a gentleman on a trolley to go back to A&D, please. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Thank A&E patient numbers are on the rise. It's putting hospital beds under more pressure than ever before. At the minute, there aren't any beds next door. There is movement next door, though, and I think there's about 20 beds in the system, so... All of the emergency bays are currently full with patients. The team's only option is to leave A&E bed nine and Chris in the corridor to wait for his x-ray results. You've been evicted, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take long, mate, did it? <laughs> oh, no. No, it does. <laughs> All right. Okay. His x-rays have revealed no breaks. Nurse Bishop gives him medication for the pain. Okay, we've just got some ibuprofen and some cold cordial for you, OK? Yeah. How's the bike then? Uh, it's fine, I think, because I was, hit, I was hit square on, so it just flung across the road rather than buckling it. But I'll have a proper look when I get. Oh, that's okay. No brakes. Spikes, all right. Yeah, no. It's uh, quite lucky there, actually. Yeah, definitely. You should have your helmet on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I'm forever sort of telling people like, that you have your helmet on. Yeah, I haven't looked at that because I cracked the ground with that, so it's probably got a, 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 a crack in it. Right, that's fine then. You're all right to step down if you feel yeah. okay to do so. <laughs> An hour and a half after arriving, Chris is discharged. A&E bed 9 needs to be turned around quickly to keep up with patient demand. <laughs> Grandmother of 11, Margaret has arrived, suffering with intense pain in her leg. There's only one bed for her, it's A&E bed 9. Right, I've got you booked in, Margaret. We'll get you seen two beds, just have a seat. I got up one day and my knee was painful, swelling. It maybe it's just something that will go away, but after a week it became unbearable. This is the second time Margaret has come to A&E with pain in her knee. On the first visit, a month ago, she was admitted overnight. She was x-rayed and fluid was drained from her knee. Nurse Diaz is assigned to her case to carry out her initial tests. 
I'm just going to check you do a pressure thing, so okay, so Did they drain it last time, is that right? Yeah, they drained it last time. So they'll probably drain it, come down, drain it again, maybe. Last time Margaret had this procedure, she had intense pain. They put the needle, it was a long needle, you know, they put it through here. You know, which was very, very painful. They try it several times. It's like getting blood out of your vein, but with this it's different because it's in between your bones. And it was very, very painful. It was pain ever apart from childbirth. Dr. Richardson, a junior doctor, wants to be sure a drain is the right course of action. When you had it drained, did that help with the pain? Um, it helped a little bit. Um, the, the, the drain itself um, has its own pain that mm -hmm. it came with because yeah. they didn't give me any look on it. Okay, all oh, right. And are you able to walk on it? Yeah, but not weight bear on this yeah. completely. It's mainly this. Mainly on the yes, right leg yes, instead. So I hope, okay, fine. You know. Okay. I'm just going to come on this side. Now, can you straighten your leg out, do you think? Or uh, it's, it's very, very, very painful short. straight. Okay, just yeah. as best like you can, it. that's fine. Now, I'm just going to have a quick... Margaret video. is part of a large family. Tell me if it's sore yeah, Without it's her it's mobility, sore, yes. the whole family is affected. All sore on yeah. yeah. there. Yeah. Oh! Where did yeah, that hurt so when I did that? Yeah. On that side, right, yeah. okay. There's possibly a bit of fluid in there still, but the orthopaedic doctors are going to come down and see you. My and I think they're going to take another sample off as well. If there is fluid and if they're going to drain it, I will request it that if I can have a look at it. Look at it. Okay. Because the last it was time too much. Yeah, I understand. I didn't have any the last okay. time. Well, yeah. let me go and see what the results are because it may be that we might not need it. If they've taken quite a lot off, it's unlikely mm -hmm. that it's all come back. So, mm -hmm. you know, we might not need that at the moment, but we'll, we'll see. I'll be back in sort of five, ten minutes once I've had a quick look. Okay, okay. thank you very thank much. You. Thank Good you. Night. Uh, I'm not entirely certain um, what's going on at the moment. I think um, she may have gout in her knee, and uh, that's possibly what she came in with at the start of the month. Gout um, is a build-up of crystals um, that can happen in the knee. They're usually formed by um, some of the waste products that your body forms, um, and they can form in any joint. Um, usually it's your toe or your knee or something like that, and it's incredibly painful, really difficult to walk on. Hi, Doctor. So, I've spoken to the orthopaedic doctors yeah. and they think what we need to do is get some blood tests, yeah. get an x-ray mm -hmm. and they may need to take another sample. Right. But we'll ask for we'll ask for the local anaesthetic, don't worry. <laughs> okay? Okay. A&E bed 9 is quickly put to work. After a short stop in X-ray, the bed takes Margaret back to the bay to wait for the orthopaedic doctors. They will decide if her knee should be drained. The Great North Children's Hospital in Newcastle. Here, the Paediatric Emergency and Assessment Unit sees almost 500 cases a year of children with objects stuck in their nose or ears. It's Clem, I'm the Paediatric Coordinator. Oh, hi. I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Five-year-old Harsel has been admitted to Paediatric a &E Bed 27 with a small ball in his ear. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Who put that in your ear? He won off to oh, his best friend. Oh, <laughs> Nurse Park makes an attempt to remove the ball. Can you do this? Can you hold your nose? Or shall I hold it? And can you go... <laughs> oh, it's not moved. <laughs> I think it's moved a little bit out, but not much. Today was Harsel's first day back at school. His mum, Pratima, is by his side. 
Oh, he's very naughty. He's a little monkey. Never keeps still. He's very hyper kid. Yeah, <laughs> very curious. Just want to know about everything all the time. When I came to outside after lunch, when I was counting, someone put a white ball in my ear. Really, really worried about if he's damaged inside a lot. That's why I'm really, really worried about it. If the ball is pushed in too far, Harsel's ear canal could be damaged. A perforated eardrum could lead to a permanent loss of hearing. Nurse practitioner Rutherford is next to try and retrieve the ball. Right, for this okay. reason, yeah. Right, can I have a little look in your ear? Yeah, can you look over to that wall for me? Alright. Do you know what the ball was made of? A Stop plastic ball. Yeah. A plastic ball. Yeah. <laughs> right, what we'll try and do is we'll try and suck it out. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know that. Have you seen one of these before? <laughs> yeah. It won't hurt. It's won't. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. nice and still. You keep really, really still. The main problem when you're trying to remove something from a child's ear is it's very small anyway. Um, they can move around, they don't always like to lie still. There's always the possibility that you could end up pushing it further down. Mm -hmm. nice and still. It's take a few minutes, though, okay? Having no success with the suction tube, Nurse practitioner Rutherford moves in with a small set of forceps. Right, you keep really, really still. That's it. Ouch. Oh, it. oh my goodness. Ah! <laughs> 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 I'm going to keep it. Wait a minute. It was a very small bead which had a little hole in, which was actually quite handy because then you could actually get the forceps into the hole and pull it out. I mean, have another little look. You look over to the side again. Nurse practitioner Rutherford yeah. checks that the ball has caused no lasting damage. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing oh, else. Thanks very much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And Harsel takes a memento of the day. You, know, you have to tell yeah. your friends not to put things in your ear. Just keep an eye that it doesn't get any discharge or anything oh, yeah. from it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. You. All right. I think... oh. Harsel parts company with paediatric A and E bed twenty seven. At the Great North Children's Hospital, the paediatric A&E beds can be turned around in less than 10 minutes. Hello, PJ Day, Becky speaking. Paediatric bed 27 welcomes its next emergency patient. 14-year-old Abby has been admitted with stomach pain. Her mum, Keely, is worried it's appendicitis. Hello. Hi, Hi, so I'm Becky, one of the nurse practitioners in here. Yeah. Nurse practitioner Ramshaw will examine her. So, can you tell us what's been happening to her? Abby started complaining of a pain in her side on Friday night. Yeah. Um, she was seeing it was really sharp and it was hurting when she was breathing. Okay. And um, we'll give her paracetamol. She's had paracetamol for a couple of days and it's not easing at right. all. So I took her down to the doctor this morning and explained to him and he said we should bring her here and have a check because he thinks she has appendicitis. Okay, all right. So it's been going on since Friday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What, on holiday on Sunday? Oh, yeah, when yeah. you're going on Sunday. So, Lou, so oh, yeah. fingers crossed everything's okay. So, just tell me if I press anywhere that's sore or... Appendicitis affects one in 13 people. It's starting to get a bit uncomfortable. If it isn't stopped in time, it can be life-threatening. Just pop your hands just straight down by your sides if you can, roughly. Up there. Is that sore as well? Yeah. OK. There. That's uncomfortable there. There. OK. Right, we'll pop that bed back up now, OK? There. That OK? She is sore over the area where your appendix is, mm -hmm. and obviously I think that's what your GP was worried yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Appendicitis. I think what we should do is take some blood samples from her. Right. And we'll have a little look at the inflammatory markers and just right. see if there's any sign of any infection going right. on. Brilliant. That would then need me to refer you to see one of the right. surgeons oh, today. Okay. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, so I'm not be long. All right, and we'll come back and get that sorted. 
Appendicitis is an inflammation of the appendix and, and it can become, it can make the child become more unwell because it, it can cause sepsis, which is quite a nasty infection. She would need to get some treatment for some antibiotics to cover her for the sepsis and then probably surgery to remove the appendix. I have three children. Abby is the middle child. I have Ellie Hill 16 and Corby Hill 7 in two weeks time. This is Corby. This is Ellie and this is Abby. We left Abby to last, didn't we? Best to last. <laughs> The whole family are due to go on holiday to Spain in five days' time. If she needs surgery to remove her appendix, Abby won't be well enough to travel. Lovely, sweetheart. I'll go and get this sent out. Okay, thank you. Fingers crossed, legs crossed, toes crossed. We'll be devastated. Until the blood tests come back, Abby will stay with paediatric bed 27 and wait. <laughs> A&E bed 9 at Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary has been occupied by Margaret for two hours and 15 minutes. She's been struggling with intense pain and swelling in her left knee. Orthopaedic specialist Dr Ferns and junior Dr Nolan have arrived to drain liquid from her knee for analysis. Okay, so this is just the numbing agent. Mm -hmm. Is it starting to feel numb a little bit? Dr. Nolan tries to draw off liquid, but the needle won't go in. And just glide in quite gently. Yeah, it feels like it's getting stuck. Moving a bit more inferior. A bit deep. more deep. Yeah. Try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They need another needle. Chop scratch. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Keep, sorry. Keep, it, keep it even down. Keep it still, keep it still. Yeah. Keep. And you want to be quite close to the hilt. Okay, just to give you an idea. Oh, is that fluid there? Take it out a little bit, but not too much. The needle. Not too much. Take as much out as you can. You see, that's quite a lot that's coming out. Can you see that? I said, keep the plastic straight. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let it go, okay? I've got gauze. <clears throat> so you just take everything out and I'll put it over. Very good. Okay. This is a lot more than what was taken yeah. out the last time. Did you hear that? Yeah. 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 So it's a little better. Can you try and bend your knee a bit more? Stay. Oh no, it won't be fixed altogether, yeah. but as long as it's a little bit better. Yeah. Margaret's knee fluid is sent to the lab for tests. After two and a half hours, Dr. Ferns oh, no. returns. Sorry, have you been waiting here the whole team? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. I got called the results from half an hour ago, but I've not been able to come and see you. So basically, the results have came back all negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, the yeah. fluid, there's nothing in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I think this is probably arthritis. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so the best thing, we're going to give you some stronger painkillers today. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we didn't really get an answer for Margaret today, but we ruled out anything serious. So, other than that, we can let her go home and we'll give her increased pain for so she can sleep tonight and she'll be a bit happier at least. It's a bit disappointing, to be honest with you. Obviously, the pain, that doesn't take the pain away and the swelling, as you can see. You know, and every move now is agony. I'll be glad to be out of here, to see the back of the bed. Mm -hmm. Very tall. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll walk you down. Margaret leaves A and E bed nine. Investigations into the pain in her knee will continue. A 
at Newcastle's Great North Children's Hospital. A&E Bed 27 has been occupied by teenager Abby for an hour. She has suspected appendicitis and is waiting with Mum Keely for test results. So it doesn't look like we're going home in a hurry. So I hope that bed's pretty comfortable. Strong coffee, what I need. Anything to eat or drink is what I need. I'm so glad I had my crunchy nuts. I wish I had had some indeed. I'm absolutely clamming. If they're going to have to take your appendix out, you can't have anything, have you? I'd die of starvation before I get my appendix out. Hopefully I don't need them out, I don't want them out. Abby's come in today with abdominal pain and um, there's a few possible causes of, of this and one of them is we're thinking it may be appendicitis. The only way to confirm that is blood test. Once those results are back, I'll speak to one of the paediatric surgeons here and we'll go from there. Abby's family have been planning a holiday to Spain for more than six months. Just think next week you might be on a bed in Spain. I've had a countdown since the day you broke it. It's four days, 14 hours and 21 minutes until we go to the airport. <laughs> I could cry. Yeah, After two and a half hours, there's news. Hello, you alright? Hello. So, the blood results are back. Um, one of them is slightly raised a little yeah. bit, which would suggest that there's a bit of a viral illness going on yeah. at the moment. But it doesn't look like an Oh, brilliant. That is amazing. <laughs> OK, so we can take that cannula out yeah. and get you on your way. Um, and if she develops any other symptoms that you're concerned about, or right. she gets a temperature at all that you're worried about, then pop her back and we'll check you over again. She I don't think she would tell us if she did now. <laughs> 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 Relief. Yes. All right. Thanks, thank you. Okay. Enjoy your birthday and your holiday. Thank, thank you. you. Right, no Thanks. <laughs> Yay! Patient. <laughs> <laughs> Abby leaves paediatric A and E bed twenty seven. <laughs> Our hospital beds have given us intimate access to the work of the NHS. Chris is back on his bike after the accident. Margaret has since been diagnosed with arthritis. She's managing the pain. Baby Calvin made a full recovery and is back home. The beds are now back on their wards, ready and waiting for their next round of patients.